What is going on, Wire to Wire? Thank you so much for tuning in. We're happy that you guys are here uh, tuning in. We got some sports talk. We got some things to talk about. Come on now. Let's, we're going to talk about a couple different things today. We're going to talk about the Knicks and the whiny Pacers. The whiny Bunch Pacers. Bunch of whiners, bro. Bunch of whiners. Crazy. The whiny, whiny Pacers. Pacers. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit. We should we should just bounce around the NBA a little bit. We'll talk a little Cavs, Celtics yeah, today sure. uh, uh, too. Talk talk some Aunt Edwards and some T Wolves today maybe. Um, let's let's start up with this Ben. Um, we're going to begin our our conversation today. Sorry, I'm just happy. I was looking at the score and stuff and just remembering how the Knicks won yesterday. Just got a little happy. Let's start here. Let's start with the glaring thing. The complaints about the officiating. Yeah. I, I, all right, let's talk about game one for a second. We're not going to recap the entire game or whatever. Like, yeah. we probably don't have time to do that. I just want to talk oh, about, yeah. me, and, me and Ben were talking, right? The moving screen. That's, yeah. and the kickball, that was not. Yep. That was a bad call. The kickball yep. was a very bad call. Yep. And it put the Pacers... In a really bad spot yeah. in that game. Here's what I learned, because <clears throat> we up? thought that they should have challenged and just didn't. You can't challenge, you can't challenge a kickball, which is so dumb. You can challenge everything else. Why would you not be able to challenge a kickball? You should ball? be able to challenge, a, be kickball, able to challenge a kickball. But the let's talk about the moving screen. Yeah. The NBA has a screen problem. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going here. Every screen is an illegal screen. Yeah. I mean, really, like, the NBA does that a lot, or the NBA officials do that a lot. They could call a foul every time for 100%. everything if they really wanted to. But they don't, because obviously that would ruin the game. The, the beef that the Pacers have, or, you know, at least that their coach had, um, which is, like, fair, you don't call that with 12 seconds no, left in the game. No, you don't call it there. It, it was... By the letter of the law, it was a moving screen. Right. But I watched a couple of other, like, even just throughout the game, you just watch it, that was a moving screen. That was a moving screen. Right. And then, like, randomly, if, the, if, like, basically a moving screen is called if the, if the player that sets the screen either does a really obvious moving screen or the player falls or gets hit hard on the screen. Those are the two ways a moving screen gets yeah. called in the NBA. And a moving screen is basically another version of the free throw free throw violation. Right, that's what I was going to bring up. They violate uh, on every the free time. throw literally every time. There's you also be able to. There's also well, this is one thing that I that I'm like a little passionate about that every NBA player does. When they catch the ball like coming around a screen or whatever and somebody gives them a pass and they catch it, it's a travel every single time. They take three, four steps, and then, like, they finally gather and then, like, go make their move, whatever. It's a travel every single time. But it's really like that for, you know, so many things. Moving yeah. screens, violations, like, traveling, whatever. They could call it all the time if they really wanted to. But, like, man, like, even as Knicks fans, it's like, dude, you don't call that one there call. with 12 seconds left. You it's just don't. Call. It um, might have cost the Pacers the game, to be honest with you. It could have. I mean, it wasn't a guarantee, but it could have. Yeah. So, like, that was game one. Game two, I honestly don't even know specifically what uh, the Pacers coach, Rick Carlisle, is so up in arms about. Like, specifically what call. I don't know. I know what call he got. Re he was like, what kind of sent him over the edge? He felt as though that the Hartenstein double dribble, which clearly was not a double dribble. Like clearly not. It was now let's let's talk about this briefly. It was a carry. They carry yeah, all the time he, he in the NBA. Are carry. you kidding me? But but you you they everybody carries in the NBA. Yeah. Everybody. You could do whatever you want with the basketball. You could practically pick up the basketball. You just can't put your hand you just can't put your other hand on it. Yeah. And he but it was not a double dribble. The referees did the right thing, got together and made the right call. I think it just kind of sent Rick Carlisle over the edge because he kind of just felt like the entire night like he was like not really getting calls. I get that. And just sent him over the I, edge. I looked at the um, the foul disparity and the free throw disparity. The Knicks got three more calls in their favor last night, and they shot 
five more free throws. That's just home court. It's and a home court. Of the free throws were on the fouls at the end. Yeah, of the game for too. sure. Yeah, for sure. Like that's really nothing. And it's also the Pacers don't have as aggressive as a play style as the Knicks. So like you're gonna get less calls when you jack up, uh, you know, more threes, right. whatever. Which they only shot four more threes in the game, but still, it, it's a play style thing. Um, but yeah, Rick Carlisle. Here's what I don't like. Well. First of all, he he filed a complaint with the league about 78 or 79 missed calls. Like, Brother. There is no way. Brother. There is no way. 78? That might have been every call that went in the Knicks' favor. Yeah, seriously. Like, you just got to relax. That, but, that's embarrassing. 78 is embarrassing. But here's the thing, and I'll try to find it. Here's the thing that I don't like about it um, is that the Pacers players are, like, not complaining about the – uh, really, offici- of, yeah, Halliburton and uh, T.J. McConnell are not complaining about the officiating. Um, T.J. McConnell said, we love Rick showing that type of energy on the court, but that's not the feeling we have in the locker room. We're g- not going to sit here and blame officials. We, we got to be better. It's just that simple. And so, like, the players are, you know, I'm sure that they're upset, but they're not voicing it. And they're not like, you know, coming out and blaming the refs for the reason that they're losing. Halliburton didn't do that after game one. He said he had a similar quote to TJ McConnell. Um, and so it's just like, man, like, you know, sometimes the officials are bad. Here's my take. We talked about that last time. Yeah, here's my take. The game one, the Pacers can be upset about. Game two, they lost. They lost. And it's and you just lost. You sp- lost by nine points, and Jalen Brunson was out for, for, for how long? For and like a quarter lost. and a half. And, and OG, OG out was, was out for a you quarter lost. and a half. You lost the game. You did not do enough to yeah, win the let's, game. Let's go. I'll go one step further. You lose by 20 if we don't if we, if we yeah. don't have Like, if we come don't have on, it. man. Like, le, like, I'm sorry. That's what just do you bad. want? Like, you, you lost the game. I. Mitchell Robinson's <laughs> out. Yeah. Jalen missed. Uh, you know, maybe a fifth of the game. OG missed like a fifth of the game or more than a fifth, like a third almost. And, and you lost by nine. And, you know, your best player had a good game. Our best player is just way better. So 100%. sorry. Jalen Marquise. <laughs> I, think, I think that the biggest conversation that needs to be had about the Knicks right now. All right, listen. I want to believe in this team. If this team was healthy, I could get behind us beating the Celtics in the next round of the playoffs. I, I would. I, it would. Do you be, mean like healthy, healthy, like Julius and Mitch <laughs> and OG and just not and Julius, Bogey? It, it, even without Julius, I can get behind it. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I would have been there. I, I could. I could get behind it. I'm not the Celtics saying I without think Porzingis. Favorite. No, even with Porzingis, I think that the Knicks would. Uh, my prediction would be the Knicks lose. But what I'm saying is. I could try to get myself there. Yeah, no, I understand. But, like, I, I, I'm pretty realistic about that type of stuff. I, I think the Celtics would, are going to – I think the Celtics would, would probably even be favored even with Julius Randle on the team. The Celtics are a very good They would, good team. and they should have been. They're, they, they're they, a very they good team. Be. They should be. Well, well, we can't – they should have been. The Knicks haven't had Julius in so long. It's, it's like you, right. you don't even really think about right. it. Right. I am worried about our health. I am worried. Uh, we we're, we're six deep right now without OG. With with OG, we're seven deep, and you know you're not gonna. Alec Burks is, is he got a minute last night? Did you know that? Did he really? He did. He missed one shot. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, Alec Burks can get a bucket if he if he, he you know can. needs he to. Not. He's just the only difference is that Alec Burks. I kind of feel like Boggy knew how to play within the offense. Alec Burks just tries to go team takeover yeah. when he goes on the court. Um, ultimately, though, the Knicks are going to win this series with or without OG. I really believe they're going to win this series. We, we're up by yeah. two. I think we're going to win this series. Um, it's going to be tough without OG to win this series. I, 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 I think Indiana will take the next game. I think, I think so. I think I agree. Ultimately, I think that because they have a two-game lead, even if OG doesn't come back, I think that the Knicks can gut it out in six. I really don't see it going seven, even without OG. Um, I think with OG, it's it's Knicks in five. Uh, I'm kind of there as well. I, um, without OG, give me give me Knicks in six or seven. Yeah, um, it's just tough. And like you know, you can say, all right, Alec Burks is on the bench and Shake Milton's on the bench. The reality is. 
a- and any coach in the playoff is o- in the playoffs is only going to play the guys that they trust, and especially Tibbs is only going to play the guys that he trusts. I don't even know who Shake Milton is. He was on the Sixers last year, the year before, and he had some fine moments. He's a guard. Um, does, he, does he play defense? I don't really know. I, I didn't. I don't really know. I mean, we might be forced to play guys like that because if OG's out, we're going to be forced to play guys. If OG's out, then. <laughs> yeah, if OG's out, then we have one bench player, and, and it's Deuce McBride. And he hasn't been and playing that's just all the like, series. Ugh, it's brutal. It's brutal. It's really sad that the Knicks haven't been healthy, but they they find a way to win. That's what they, that's what Jalen always says. Shout we out to Josh way. Hart, man. Oh, my Guy gosh. Is Dude a is an warrior. Iron Man. He's a warrior. Insane. He must be so fit. So fit. Like, honestly, I'd rather be fit like Josh Hart than be fit with, with like with, like, C bum, I I know that's not really. That, I know you would w- want to be like C bum probably, but like for me, I think, I think, and you guys can you guys can let me know in the comments. But I think that it is better to have a lean but but toned and musc and like slightly muscular look than just like this outrageous muscular look where it's like you can't even like like it, it's kind of disgusting how big you are. I don't like that. I know you like that. I don't like it. I um, I also feel like you're healthier when you're when, when you're not. Well, like yeah, that. because if you look like sebum, then you're you're on stuff. So obviously you're very you're, much you're on stuff. But also like, I don't really know if it's that good to be you, the amount of supplements that you take and the protein that you intake and stuff like that. Like I'd rather look like Josh Hart. It's less than you think, but um, I, I'm with yeah, Josh Hart. So. Anything um, else on the Knicks? No, nah, nothing else on the Knicks. Or you know, the the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton is is he had a good what, game. is whatever. I mean, he's he's he had, he, he had a good game. He in thirty five minutes, thirty four six and nine. I mean, listen. He had a great game last night. If you're Rick Carlisle, like cool that you played uh, four guys on the bench that had at least fifteen minutes. If you're trying to win the game and Halliburton's having a good game, why are you not playing him? You could have played him thirteen more minutes. Like that's basically a must win game in a lot of ways, like yeah. not must, must win. You can get the, the two at home and like your two, two, but Halliburton could have played, Hal, Halliburton could have played, you know, more minutes. He, he, he only played 35, but he had 34, six and nine. Um, great game for him. Yeah. So. Um, all right. Here's, here's what we need to talk about. Can anyone beat the Celtics? In the East? No. In, in the West? Yes. Absolutely. In the West, yes. In the East? No. I don't, Ben, I don't know if the Cavs are going to get a game against the Celtics. I wanted, uh, I wanted the, the Celtics, I wanted the Magic to beat the Cavs because I think the Magic would have been grittier against the Celtics personally. I don't think, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say that maybe the Celtics, because I will say one thing about the Celtics that favors for us. The Celtics coast a little bit. They coast. They get excited that they won. The, that that they they like they're like up by a lot. And have you noticed that they don't close well? Um. Yeah, I I didn't watch one second of of game one. Okay. Cavs Celtics. Well, I I don't mean Cavs Celtics. I just I mean in general. Won't. The Celtics have a bad closing offense. Um. Because their offense is very reliant on three pointers. It's very, it's very one on one, like in a close game late for sure. Um, and by the way, like kind of so is the Knicks. Like, it's it's all like we'll spend twenty of the twenty four seconds trying to get Jalen the ball, 100%. and then it's like you know. Difference is, is that the Knicks are grittier and the Knicks offensive rebound uh, like crazy, and the Knicks uh, hustle. The 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 Knicks have to because their talent is not at the level of the Celtics. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. The Knicks are better defensively than the Celtics, too. The Celtics are good on defense, too. But the, I like the Knicks on defense better. I, I think that we're tougher. And I think that we, we play with more heart th- th- than they do. And I, I'll take it. With OG. Oh, with OG. You got to have OG. 100%. I wonder if I can find an update. Yeah, you can pull it up. So, I don't think anyone's beating the Celtics. In the I East. I do not think the Celtics are going to win the finals. I think that there's a very bad man. He is in the West. Some people might call him a wolf. His name is Anthony Ed, Ed, 
Edwards. I was going to try and come up with a middle name, and I was going to call him Edward, but then I realized that you, you can't be Anthony Edward Edwards. Um, Anthony Edwards. What's his middle name? What's Ant-Man's middle name? Devontae. Anthony Devontae Edwards, bro. A-D-E. That's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. He's 22 years old. He's younger younger than, me. than both of us. He was born in 2001, and he is he is right now the alpha of the of the 2024 NBA playoffs. He is the alpha. The only the only player that even is like is a far second is Jalen's a far second because Jalen has yeah Jalen is Jalen Brunson is the second best player in the NBA playoffs right now. The number one player is Anthony Edwards, and I'm he's, sorry. He's the best by stats. What? Jalen, I think is the best by stats. But no, I agree. Yeah, it's got to uh, be agree. Ant Man. I agree. Um, it's got to be Ant Man. But Brunson is having an historic playoff run. Uh, Ant Man, though, is amazing. Um, do the Nuggets come back against the Wolves? They won't get swept. Ugh, they won't get swept. They can't get swept. Do you want me to tell you what I think is going to happen? Sure. The Nuggets win tonight in Minnesota. The Nuggets lose the game four. The Nuggets win game five. The Nuggets win game six. And the Wolves win game seven. This game, this series is still going to seven. That's my prediction. Jokic, Jokic does not care, but he, he just like is too good at basketball to be I able agree, to, 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 to get the thing, dogged like the that. The thing that's crazy about this series so far is that um, Jokic, the, the, the Wolves defense has been so dominant that Jokic hasn't looked as much like Jokic. So, like, that's that's a consideration. I mean, yeah, in 39 minutes, 16, 16, and 8 with, on 5 for 13 shooting, which, like, for him is not good, like, which is, is a little wild. But, like, for him, 16, 16, and 8 is, like, Yeah, it's eh. a bad night, yeah. And so, like, yeah. So, like, that's a consideration. The Wolves' defense is just insane. Yeah, the like, Wolves' defense is really good, and that's insane. why I like them against a potential finals they, matchup. They, with they, the won, they won by 26 without Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Crazy. And their defense looks so good without Rudy Gobert, who's a defensive I, player I of the like year. I like the Wolves against the Celtics in the finals. Yeah. I think, I think too, like, Anthony Edwards, his, um, like, personality is so, like, like he's, he is a dog, and, like, he's a killer. And the Celtics, like, don't really have that guy. I'm going to make a take. Okay. Jason Tatum. I'm going to make a take. Jason Tatum is right now is really not a dog like that. He's really not a dog. No. Tatum was the third best player on the court in game in game 1 against the Cavs. Well, he 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 d didn't do anything. He goes possessions without even touching the ball. Right. And, I, and, and listen, Celtics fans will be so mad to hear that because they, like, love him so much, and I understand that. But, guys, I understand that there's guys all on his team and stuff like that, that there's a lot, a lot to go around. But, like, even those Warriors, that the two, like, with Steph Curry and with Draymond, and with Clay and with KD, KD still got him some. Steph still got him some. You know what I mean? Like those were those were the guys. And and the reason why I bring them up is because Tatum is 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 being compared to guys like Steph and KD in this generation. He is like he in this generation. They're like oh like Tatum is like you know like in this generation like one of those guys. And I'm just like I don't think he is. No, he hasn't shown yet. Like that, that like takeover killer mentality no. on the biggest stage. He he had it twenty eighteen, um, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen against the Cavs that last LeBron year or one of the last LeBron years, right? When he dunked on him, like, and, and which is weird because that was like when he was younger, and it seems as though as though as he's gotten older, he's like lost it more and more. He's like very um, passive on the basketball court. I feel like sometimes, yeah, like with his, he always is trying to pull up threes and stuff. Yeah, like that. the one thing that I like, and I really haven't watched. 
I haven't watched the Celtics, and this is what I come to. Like, they haven't played a meaningful game in months. Like, month. They probably haven't played a meaningful game in, like, three months. Yeah. Because they had the one seed so locked up. And, like, even so far in the East, the East is so much weaker. Like, the Heat without Jimmy Butler, he didn't need to play well for them to win. The Cavs, this series, he probably won't need to play well for them to win. If if it's Knicks, Celtics, and especially if it's no OG, Jason Tatum probably won't need to play all that well for the Celtics to win. It no. probably won't need to be until the if finals. So it, if he doesn't, like, show up in the finals, then it's like, dude, like, you didn't do anything all year, and no, then you just, just didn't carried. show it up. You got carried. Yeah. But if he if he like coasts, but then like really like turns it on in the finals and sure, has a great sure. finals, I'll give him that. Like, um, I think he has to win though. I think yeah, he has to win, win for it to like be reconciled for him. He's got to win, and he's got to be like the guy. Yeah. Because like if like Derek White and and Jalen Brown and, and or or Porzingis outplay him and are just better than him and it's like oh th that's the guy then then Tatum I'm sorry he man, has but to you, you're carried he has to be the like they have to win the finals and he has to be the clear finals MVP 100% like even KD I'll give him this when he was on the Warriors he was the best player on, on the Warriors in those finals he won finals MVP right am I am I right about that yeah he did yeah and he, he won finals MVP one of the years and both the years both the years both of their uh champ they're back to back he won so the so he was the guy yeah. You know? And so it's like, it's like, I'll give him that. Yeah, he was on a stacked team, but at least like they won because of him. Like Tatum right now, I don't really know if they're winning because of him. I think they're just winning with him. Right. They're which not like, winning in spite of him, but they're just right. winning with him. Which like at this point, again, they don't need to. They don't need to win because of him right, right. now because they do have a really, really good team. Um, the Kristaps didn't play game one, right? No, he's been. He's gonna be out. Um, I wonder if he's playing tonight. No, he's not. He's out multiple weeks. Yeah, week um, to week. They haven't needed him to play. Like they haven't needed him to play well and like be the reason that they won so far. It like they will if it's you know if it's Minnesota or the Nuggets if they're able to come back and pull it out. Um, I really kind of think it's one of the two of those out of the West. I really Minnesota don't see. Or Thunder? Yeah, I really don't see. I mean, it's it's like kind of disrespectful, and I like. I don't think anybody means it to be disrespectful, but like, I don't think anybody really is picking the Thunder to come out of the West, but they've been like, they've been almost equally as dominant with like a really good guy. Um, and like, I like you know. the Wolves over the, over the Thunder, although I think the Thunder are good. Um, yeah. I, I was very impressed watching them play the Mavs. Yeah. They, they beat them. Yeah. And, yeah. and like it looked like the Mavs had no answer. Yeah. Like so, yeah, they looked like the better team. But either way, Jason Tatum, if like to win the finals, he will need to show up and play well. Um, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't and they win, it's like, dude, you're just like a piece in like a really good team, but you're not the guy. Is it is it that hot of a take to say that Jalen Brunson is is in this playoffs is just like been way better than Jason Tatum? 100%. He's needed to be because the Knicks team isn't as good and because the Knicks have played in so many close games. Right. 100%. Yeah. But, like, I my, – my, my friend John would kill me if he heard me saying this. He'd be so mad. Brunson versus Tatum needs to be a conversation. If Tatum, if Tatum doesn't show up and, like, doesn't have a really good conference finals finals – and win, win the finals, win finals MVP, or just has, like, a uh, lacking finals, then, yeah, I agree. I would love to see no OG – or o, with OG and no Chris stops, do the Knicks beat the Celtics in the conference finals? No, I don't not think so. Not deep enough? Or yeah. Not, 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 score or not deep enough and just not as much talent. And, you heard uh, it here first. I think they could have gotten two games and made some of the other games close, but I think the Celtics would have won in mm. six max. Ready for this? The Knicks of New York. They will take the Boston Celtics as long as OG is back and he's playing. They will take the Boston Celtics. 
to seven games in the conference finals. I'd like to get past the Pacers first, yeah, personally. You're right. you're right. But no, I'm looking ahead. I'm definitely am. And like, one thing I say to my friend, one thing I say to my friend John, because my friend John will always talk to me. He's a big Celtics fan. One thing he'll say when he talks to me is, I'll be like, "Yo, Knicks." I'll be like, "Yo, like, 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 you should be rooting for the Pacers right now. You don't want to see us in the conference finals." He'll be like, "We need to beat the Cavs first. And I'm like, "I get that, but as a fan, you're allowed to look forward." Because, because as a fan, you're not actually playing the game. The reason why you don't look forward is because you don't want to lose focus. But as a fan, what are you losing focus on? You're not out there playing. Like, right. it's like you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, as a fan, though, I do understand we need to get past the Pacers. We do need to do that, and we do need to finish the job. Pacers aren't just going to roll over for us. No. You know? And they'll have a game where, like, offensively, they're just insane. Friday will be that shot. Game. Yeah. Friday, they're winning Friday. They're winning Friday. There's a there's a bad man that might have something to say about that. If they lose Friday, if they lose Friday, here's the thing that I don't like is we're still being disrespected. The Knicks are still being disrespected. I hate it. Still. Oh, I can't stand it. What do you it. want us to do? I cannot what stand it. What do you it. want us to do? We got to and the I conference finals. It. Like if we win this series, we got to the conference finals. What did you want? What did you want us to do? Did you want us to beat Boston when you don't even when some where many analysts don't even think that Boston is gonna lose the finals? What what do you want us to do? They want uh, they want Jalen Marquise to get like surgery so that he's three inches taller. I don't know what they want. I don't get it. It's but like, that's what they want. And dude, Chuck was hating on us so bad. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. You sent it. What a naughty man. So was Shaq. But not in a good way. I don't they get hate it. Us. Why would you not like this team? I. I, I hope that... I don't get it. Draymond, all the ESPN talking heads. We're going to win. get it. We're going to win against the Celtics, but not the series. We're going to win some games. It's going to be tough, dude. Even to beat them in some games is going to be tough. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll end with this. Go Rangers tonight. Oh, yeah. Rangers are up 2-0 on the Hurricanes. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll say this because this is interesting. This is like kind of like something that people, because people don't really watch hockey. I feel like that in this area that that would watch our pod. But yeah, no. If all goes according to the way it's supposed to go, which in sports, you know, it, you know, sometimes doesn't. It's going to be Boston versus New York in NHL and NBA. That'd be cool. It'll be Rangers, but the difference is we are the Celtics. The Rangers were the Celtics, and the Bo- Boston's the Knicks. So be That'll reverse, be cool. but so basically, what's going to happen is there's going to be games going on at the Garden, uh, at the at both Gardens. Mm. He's, I'm pretty sure the Bruins play at the Boston, mm. uh, at the Boston yeah. or TD Garden yeah. too. There'll be games going on at like the Rangers will host first, and Boston and the Celtics will host us first, <laughs> and then we'll switch. That's cool. Be pretty that's, fun. that's pretty cool. It'll yeah, the fun. Knicks are like eight. The Knicks and the Rangers are combined like eight and one at the Garden in the playoffs. Pretty cool. It's awesome. Pretty cool. Thanks for joining us for Wire to Wire. We had a good time. It was good. We'll see you guys for the next Wire to Wire episode, which I don't know when it will be. Hopefully the Knicks will be swept by then, or we'll sweep them by then. Bye. Bye.